Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, welcome to Public Art Dubai, the next chapter. So this is a talk that comes as part of Living Legacies, the second season of Etihad Museum's cultural program by Al Sirkal. Today, we are joined with Dr. Saeed Mubarak Harbash, Chief Executive Officer of the Arts and Literature Sector at Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, Benedetta Rion, Executive Director of Art Dubai, as well as two of the five artists who collaborated on the first major landmark installation uh, of Dubai Public Art. We have Afra al Dahiri and Sheikha al Mazrua, who worked alongside Muhammad Ahmed Ibrahim, Asma Bil Hamar, and Khalid al Banna. So their work, Union of Artists, was re revealed earlier this week. It is a large-scale, site-specific work situated at Al Hudayba, right by Etihad Museum and Union House. The fact that five Emirati artists across different generations and from different parts of the country collaborated together on the first Dubai public art project is significant and has a certain symbolic credence. But before we get into the specifics of the work, I'd like to ask about the mission and driving force of Dubai Public Art. Dr. Saeed, what inspired the initiative? And I'd love if we can talk a bit about how public art can contribute to the local cultural fabric. Thank you very much. Roche, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, I'll talk a little bit three years ago when we started thinking about the idea was beautifying the city and keeping uh, or making Dubai an open air museum. And, making art uh, accessible for everyone uh, with a lot of support uh, with Benny and, and Ben and uh, teams from Art Dubai, team from Sirkal, Akkas, Arjamil and uh, Tashkil. Uh, we developed a mechanism that we uh, not only do uh, work on public art installation that would be implemented in the next years uh, for a short period of time, but we have a long-term plan to involve the private sector in what we do. So we started by saying, number one, we, we as Dubai Culture, we don't want to be the, uh, the entity that would talk to the artist and would uh, be uh, you know, uh, commissioning the artist. Uh, we're not experts. We, uh, uh, I think we, uh, everyone on the team knows the, uh, there are experts in the field, uh, the five entities that I mentioned, and they, we wanted to work with the experts and they have, every one of them, have a circle of, uh, I would say, uh, contacts that they have, and different, whether it's a circle and a lot of Algoz creatives connected to, to the team there, uh, Art Dubai with, with the work that Art Dubai has been doing across the year, and, and, and Tashkil with the younger and Emirati uh, uh, talents. Uh, then we thought, okay, how we can think about it on, in terms of giving an opportunity for the, uh, the, the, the big names uh, such as the two ladies here or also the new generation that we have. So we've done a mechanism on a series of open call, direct, uh, open call and direct call where we started the major piece, one of the major pieces with Art Dubai on an open call opposite the Tahad Museum. Uh, 248. 238. 48. Uh, 48. Uh, 248 applicants uh, uh, came. Uh, other, uh, a couple of other uh, direct co uh, open calls uh, with uh, with Arjamil. Uh, we're working with Sirkal and, and another one, and also uh, Tashkil. With this 240, I think going fast forward, fast a little bit to what happened. Uh, we had five, uh, uh, five artists uh, that had been selected. I'm, I'm looking at Sheikha and smiling. Sheikha called me, I think, Thursday or Friday. She said, let's meet. And Sheikha always tells me about uh, uh, an academic project that she wants to, to work on. Inshallah, it will uh, see the light soon. But then she's like, no, I'm meeting you with the four other artists. And it's like, OK. Uh, Let's, let's meet, and uh, I, was, I was afraid, and I was happy. I thought, yes, they will work together, but also, I don't know, I had the feeling that they would say, we will not work, and we want Muhammad Ibrahim to do it. I didn't even tell, tell Sheikha this, but I was afraid that because Muhammad Ibrahim with them, they would say, you know what, it's not, it's not uh, we will honor Muhammad Ibrahim as, as one of the pioneers in, in the art, uh, and we're given. Uh, 
uh, uh, mashallah, they came together and they've, they've done this uh, uh, beautiful installation opposite the Tad Museum. I was telling Sheikha this is also uh, makes a big drive in, in what we do in public art rather than, and I'm not saying it to, to, to make it less or not, but I'm not, we're not doing the same thing that you see again and again, whether it's the falcon, whether it's the, you know, some figures that you see every single place in, 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 in the UAE. We wanted to do something different. We wanted to do uh, something uh, that would stay, uh, that would be talking to a major audience. So the, that's the idea when we started about thinking about public art. It's a 10 years uh, program where we started for the first three years. Uh, Moza and Susie here are from the team working on it. Uh, for the first three years, it's fully funded by the government. Uh, we're still having the same funding, exactly, but we have an ambition by the fourth year uh, that we involve the private sector to be, you know, to have a bigger pool uh, to, to, to benefit uh, Dubai, inshallah. So that's in a nutshell what we do in the program. Uh, I mean, that sounds wonderful. I mean, a decade, looking a decade ahead, um, with the first landmark project, though, just in a way, the first major statement, uh, what considerations were taken when selecting the shortlisted artists? What were some of the, um, you know, criteria um, that, you know? Um, well, obviously, we didn't know what would unfold later. But I think, you know, as always, you're trying to pick the work in the best, possi the best possible work, essentially. And we also wanted to have a kind of broad representation of, you know, the generations that are working. I think one thing that we heard really clearly in the process of gathering the applications and, you know, it, it did take a level of work, right? Because, of course, whenever you do something new, there are question marks and concerns. And I think that it's no secret that maybe, uh, you know, we have some way to go in terms of public art here. And of course, this is why this is such a, a crucial and important step. So the artists had a lot of questions about, you know, will this piece be permanent? Will it be maintained? Will it be well treated? So these were um, all things that, you know, collectively we were looking at and thinking about. And we wanted to try and put together a short list that would feel like it was representative of our current moment. I think we're at a very important and critical moment in which um, we're coming of age as a scene, and that's what we were hoping to showcase. And I think the feeling we had at the end of the shortlisting process was that any one of the artists could have been an incredible winning prop proposal. And I think that was a, a really proud moment for us. You know, when, when we opened, we didn't know we would have the number of applications that we ended up having. And to then get to such a strong shortlist and feel really confident that any one of those artists could have executed beautifully a major piece of public art uh, was fantastic. I mean, with almost 250 applicants, it was kind of like a stroke of good fortune that you all knew each other and you, you kind of, some of you were even longtime friends, but you didn't even find about who else was in the shortlist until about a year ago here at Dubai, actually, when the entire shortlist was revealed and you found out. Can you talk a bit more about that initial, uh, that, that day? Yeah. Is it on? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it was really interesting because uh, I remember walking into the hallway outside and knowing that Sheikha and Asma were selected because we talked to each other and uh, I saw Mohammed Ahmed and he's like, uh, who's, who's the last one? I know four, but who's the last one? I'm like, are you with us? So he said yes. Uh, and I told him, I don't know, he said, it's me. Khalid, Sheikha, and Asma. I'm like, Muhammad, I'm not. So it was a really beautiful moment where like, wait a minute. And we were being rushed to go inside. And I remember walking past that door and I looked at Muhammad. I'm like, Muhammad, no, we have to do something about this. We cannot compete against each other. And I remember he looked at me and he said, Ana sihab. So I decided to withdraw. And I said, no, we, we will not do this without you for sure. And it moved on from there, so. 
So it's kind of exactly the opposite of what you were scared of, right? Like, <laughs> you were scared that yeah. the other artist would give it to Muhammad, and Muhammad, in fact, was like, no, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to withdraw. But Sheikha, so how did the kind of ideas start formulating into all five of you working together and then proposing uh, yeah, that the commission goes to all five? I mean, same time, exactly last year, we were all here shortlisted. And we were just throwing ideas at one another, discussing our initial proposals. Um, it was extremely diverse. Um, Afra uh, was still in the process of finalizing it, while I, um, Hamad Ahmed Ibrahim, Asma, and Khalid were discussing our initial ideas. We left the talk, and it happens that we were still together, having conversations in one of our studios. And uh, I think Afra was teasing the idea a little bit further. And she was like, no, 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 seriously. Like, what if we just play against them? So it started from a, a play of, from a place of play. And I and Asma are like staring at each other and kind of like this, we're, our eyes are sparking. We're like, yeah, maybe, let's, let's do this. We got the rest involved. And next thing we know that we are in Khalid Al Benna studio, um, discussing ideas, and little did we know that we are in Hamad Ahmed Ibrahim studio, formulating the ideas together, and it was based on really playfulness. Um, it wasn't like this is what this is the sketch and this is the intellect or conceptual uh, conceptual approach behind it, but we were really playing with straws and papers and clay and. And as we're laughing and having conversations, the shape were forming. But then we also were considering the sensitivity of the place. So obviously we had to consider, it's not any public artwork in any public space. It is a public artwork opposite to Tihad Museum. And it requires a, a very specific prestigious approach. And um, I think we just started taking it from there. And um, each and every one of us work are extremely formal and its quality, and I think that the formal quality within our practices kind of collided in one piece. And uh, we were like, okay, this is Sheikha, this is Muhammad, this is the skin uh, around the, <laughs> you know, the work is wrapped by Muhammad, this is Afra's material, this is Esma's idea. So we, it was like throwing everything in a bowl and creating an ingredient, mixing it, and so that it was, was quite an outcome. organic, uh, like, development. It was extremely organic buildup. It was extremely organic buildup. So, uh, Dr. Saeed, so when, when the proposal came for all five artists to work together, I mean, there's a certain symbolic beauty to it, given that, you know, the location, Union House, Union of Artists. Um, but what was your first reaction? What was... I <laughs> remember, sir. So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll be very honest. Uh, it was uh, between me, Benny, and Ben, a lot of calls at that time. Uh, five artists. Uh, what what would be the uh, would they work together? I was even telling Sheikha this. If something happens in the middle, so we know within a year that this art piece has to be there in a very sensitive location. Uh, what would happen in mid mid uh, you know journey? Someone decided this is not a project for me or something like. So we were even discussing this, but the idea and even uh, Benny remembers we sat and said I I think the I didn't say the risk, but it was worth taking that uh, path. Uh, five great, like as Benny mentioned, like each one. I didn't see any of the applications until the, the, the team sent it to me. The, the, they were uh, we have a judging committee that took took over. Uh, looked at this, oh, the, the five only. So each one, as Benny said, each one could have been uh, a major piece. But clubbing each together, and and uh, you know, the the artist could uh, talk more about it. Uh, the the piece itself is not connected to the uh, to the art uh, that they, they presented. It was a new a new something new. So, uh, it, to be honest, it was something satisfying. Uh, it was something that also talks to the to the uh, to the location opposite to the museum. Uh, an artist coming together by themselves. This is, I think, the best story that we. Uh, uh, they came by themselves. Whether art by or whether to buy culture, we we didn't talk to them on this. So it's, 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 it was an excellent uh, occasion, an excellent uh, opportunity that happened, yes. Uh, so Afra, when, when you were kind of developing these ideas, was, did you first attempt to bring these five individual proposals together in some way, or did you immediately just say, you know what, let's start from scratch? 
let's build an entire new thing together and bring our five um, you know, methodologies together. Um, to back up what Sheikha was saying, it did grow organically, but I remember um, before going to Khalid al-Banna's uh, studio, after we met you, uh, we sat in a cafe in uh, D3, and we said to each other, okay, it seems like they're on board. This is good. <laughs> so, <laughs> were, were we in the same meeting? <laughs> It okay, seems that they're getting on board. So let's let's start something. So actually, this is when we all decided to present what we had presented to uh, the open call because we also did not know what each of us presented in the open call. And so we shared um, uh, that. So it's like we presented to each other basically uh, what we had submitted to the open call, and we we're like, okay, let's start from there. You know, um, can we propose five works uh, working together, smaller scale? Is it a sculpture park? Is it, uh, do they conversate with, these, with each other? We had really fun uh, ideas of them like actually kind of uh, formally uh, reacting to one another and so on. It was kind of very playful. Uh, but then uh, the second time, uh, we gave ourselves a prompt. I mean, there's three academics in the team, so we had to make an assignment. So the assignment was basically to come up with a structure physically, cardboard, clay, paper, and come to Muhammad Ahmed's uh, studio in Khorfakan. And that's when we actually went to Khorfakan, and like Sheikha said, we literally sat there like kids, uh, I remember Khalid al-Banna came with a structure which is closest to what we presented in terms of sticks kind of like formulating and, uh, and so Seven on. pillars coming together. And yeah, and uh, I remember I sat next to Muhammad Ahmad, we played with clay, and then Sheikh was like, no, can you edit this part? And then we would edit it. And so it was a really interesting dynamic of how we were working. Uh, and. We, we, we've developed multiple kind of uh, proposals in that moment. And I remember Sheikha coming in and she's like, I, I think I have something. And she sketched it. She sketched uh, Khalid's uh, makat. And then Asma said, I think it needs tension. And then we played with the tension. She sketched it. She sketched a closer one to what we have now. Uh, and we moved on from there. We're like, okay, I think this was too much information. Let's sleep on it, think about it, and then let's make a decision. And, and we went from there, but it was really beautiful to be, you know, artists, kids in Muhammad mm -hmm. Ahmed's studio who's already, يعني, talks a lot about, huh? Yeah, it's a playground, and he talks a lot about playfulness in the, uh, the artist's practice, in the day-to-day, -day and so on. And there's something so satisfying about it is also it took the pressure from all of us individually, and we supported each other. We were actually uh, busy individually at different timings, and so we would hand over to one another. So one would lead something, and then I'd be like, okay, I need to travel in the next two weeks. Sheikha, can you take over? Sheikha will lead, and then Asma, and so on. And I've never worked on anything like this. Yes, there were challenges, but it was incredible dynamic. So... <laughs> So, Sheikha, the, the, the structure kind of alludes to, or brings to mind, the traditional Arish, the, the, the Imarati house in, in some form. Was that a kind of happenstance coincidence that happened like that? Or was there some kind of, I mean, was it evident after the fact, or was that, did that come up? <laughs> can, I, can I answer it with full honesty or Absolutely. with full honesty? <laughs> All right, um, I like to be transparent. Um, the term Arish did not exist. Um, I think we started developing the idea without really thinking uh, of any reference structurally, but we were thinking of it formally and conceptually without referring it to any specific body that represent anything. And I think this is where kind of the language started, our differences started to come to play. We all agreed, uh, visually, but then giving meaning to it is that we started looking at the work differently. And I believe 
uh, you asked me the question, uh, question and Afra was looking at me saying, it's asthma. <laughs> like like in, the, in the middle of the talk, like don't freak out, it's asthma. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, um, concept, um, theoretically everyone was looking at it differently. Um, uh, but uh, with full transparency, I think it was really stemmed out of that moment uh, of trying to get and embrace everyone's practice in one body of work without a reference of a personal interest. Uh, it, do, it does happen that it is in the text where we there's a reference of the Arish, and uh, but that's interesting. <laughs> and I, <laughs> the text was printed, and uh, just before jumping into the group, I jumped <laughs> speaking to Benny. I was like, "Where did Arish come from?" <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, one of the meetings we had with Tanya and Benny and we were discussing uh, preliminary uh, uh, conceptual ideas. Esma brought up Arish and I'll tell you, I remember why um, she was researching individually the construction and the practice of actually producing Arish and she realized that in the construction of the Arish it cannot be produced by a single person. It has to be right. four or five people and they sit on it each ties from one side to be able to create a whole wall of Arish and I remember we said and yeah. that's probably why they coined it and took it they, further. We didn't talk Arish. about it after but I remember we said you know we're like that. It cannot happen with only one person. person. We have to collectively, equally contribute to it for it to actually work. But that's beautiful because even though you've all collaborated on the piece, you all have these individual ways of looking at this piece. Absolutely. So I think that that just adds further credence to the work. Um, so I'm also interested now to actually bring it from design to material form. Um, I bet that was very challenging in of itself. Uh, can you elaborate on, on the process? I don't know if this is okay. So initially, the the idea is that when we started formulating it, we had marble in mind. Um, it's interesting, you know, when you create a public sculpture, you no longer think as an artist only, uh, but you think as an urban designer, an architect. We have to consider municipality, we have to consider both parties. Um, and also when you create a public sculpture, you have to think about its uh, longevity, um, climate. Uh, is the material going to withstand weather? Um, we had multiple of hiccups here and there in terms of material. Uh, but then we, uh, we did submit our proposal to multiple factories. Uh, we had our assessment done. And we were quite comfortable with the uh, approach that uh, factum, which also requires the rec recognition, uh, we wouldn't have been able to create the works uh, on our own. Factum requires the recognition of supporting us all the way through and proposing different materials when marble wasn't an option. Um, marble is one of uh, the most uh, heavy material as well, and alternative solutions were given to give a similar um, look. And um, it was very challenging uh, to think of other material which would stand our summer. Um, I think that was one of the main obstacles. And Benny and uh, Dr. Saeed and Tania from Art Dubai uh, were all involved in these discussions. Um, so I would love to give credits to all parties as we were facing these challenges. I mean, I was talking to Tanya about uh, the installation process and just installing it in the middle of a, of a storm, really. Uh, Benny, could you talk a bit about maybe the installation process? Is, uh... Yes. Well, really, the installation process started in the process of trying to install. So the first thing that we really kind of had to uh, deal with is the fact that and that's why these programs are so important, right? And we are so excited that the sculpture is here, is that we have such a huge amount of learning from the process of doing this for the first time in this way and at this scale. Um, so permitting is a whole kind of universe. Tanya is basically now a permit specialist, if anyone is interested. I shouldn't offer your services, sorry, Tanya. Um, it, because, you know, 
you, you need to explain. So basically, we would sit in the RTA offices going, this is a sculpture, this is what it is, and you know, go through that entire process. Um, once all of that kind of was done, the actual installation process was super smooth. The Factum Arte team are incredible, like, you know, incredible experts. Um, we did have to deal with the weather, but that's sort of the story of this sculpture, which has some parts of it, the element of the five artists coming together, the ease of that, which one would think might be one of the challenging parts, but actually wasn't at all. It worked so smoothly and beautifully. The coming of, you know, the other thing that I thought was, okay, the notion of them coming together is great, but then we're gonna have to work a lot on the form of it, right? Because it's gonna be a struggle, it's gonna be a process. And, um, and although it was all kind of hush-hush and they hid it all from us as, as well they should, when we saw it, it was pretty much what, what you see. I mean, bar a couple of minor changes, and I was amazed. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, we, the minute we all saw it, we were like, this is fantastic. Um, in, in every way, right? The meaning, the form, all of that. Um, so that side, you know, was actually easier probably than one can expect, and others were more challenging. We did totally have also the extreme weather events. At that point, I think we were unsurprised. But <laughs> And, um, and we're like, of course, you know, right? This is another part of the process. So it has been very much a labor of love on the part of everyone involved. Um, but I think with good humor, patience very much, you know, and the amazing support of the Dubai culture team who's kind of kept us going um, through this time, we got there in the end. And uh, add, add one thing, girl. even for us, uh, Working uh, with uh, with the artist with uh, with art uh, with art Dubai even Circal I see Circal team here with with uh, with them with with uh, with Sheikha Inshallah we're we're working on something else and again because it's uh, it's a little bit different to other cities in the world where an entity Dubai Culture is commissioning uh, commissioning uh, an artist with another entity so then uh, the the commissioning entity is different we're talking to that entity, then they would put it in a place that it's either uh, under uh, RTA or Dubai municipality or somewhere else. Uh, then we have to get all the approvals. Uh, I think uh, the, the Tani and, uh, and Benny uh, for the past, uh, I think three, four months, uh, every single message has NOC in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, I think we got 80 permits. 80 permits. Wow. Because, yeah. because of the location, because, so you, you, do, you, you would think it's, you know what, you just put something. But the, there is the, uh, sorry, but within, whether it's the lighting, whether it's the sewage system, whether a lot, a lot of things that has to be there because it's a permanent installation. That's, that's one, one of the things we learn a lot. Uh, if we had to do it uh, for six months, three months, it, it would have happened in, a in less than a month. It's, it would be very, very quick. But because we are saying this is, a, look this is a, a, you know, a piece that would be there to stay for generations to see those artists that have done something. So it, it was a challenge, but we, we, to be honest, we accept, expected that because you know, there are a lot of entities that are in the mix. It helped us a lot. This piece itself helped us a lot. We're, we're uh, with, uh, with our colleagues from RT and Dubai Municipality and other entities. We're talking now on having a committee that rather than mm. talking to them individually within that committee to get all the approvals, uh, the IP rights was there. The, a, a lot of things were, uh, were part of that discussion. Uh, I think with going forward, it will be, inshallah, uh, you know, the, the next piece is, it will be much easier for us uh, and hopefully much easier also on the entities and on the artists to, to uh, I would say, play, play with their uh, pieces. So there were a lot of lessons in this project. Wow. Um, so Afra and Sheikha, would you do it again? Would you collaborate and... Uh... <laughs> I answered it. Uh, my answer is always yes, I think. Uh, it's a whole different experience when you sit and propose uh, an idea for an open call, and I think it's quite interesting to tease out different ideas when you're with a group. And I would definitely encourage more of collaboration and collective approach. Um, it's a different experience. I feel like um, 
I'm now working with Dubai Culture on a whole different project. It's also exciting to work uh, on a whole different body on your own, but I think we've learned a lot as a group. Absolutely. I mean, I think that we don't, um, from my perspective, I feel sometimes that we don't get enough time to spend with each other as artists. Uh, we're always busy doing our own projects and uh, this brought us together in a beautiful way. Like there were times where we were really busy, but we had to carve out time to actually meet because it was necessary and we couldn't opt out to the online uh, option. We insisted that it's in-person meetings, and I think that, that that was very necessary and really beautiful to bring back the community together. Yeah. So, Dr. Saeed, you've kind of touched upon the plan ahead. I'm curious to know why it was split into two, where you have three years of government-backed projects and then opening it up to the private sector. Sure. One thing I would... Uh, like to mention uh, uh, before that, even the the idea, maybe as something I didn't mention at the beginning, uh, last year when we were here, uh, one of the things we put uh, when we started this program, uh, at least for the first years, we would only ex uh, accept uh, locally based artists. We were very, uh, you would not imagine uh, the, the everyone was, sometimes a lot of people were against it, it's like, oh, you have to open for everyone in the region. But we said, no, you know, this is for the, at least the first, hopefully five and, and more years, or only locally based artists. Uh, the, 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 the ladies mentioned, mentioned the, this piece. We have another, another installation that would be hopefully before the end of the year. Also a collaboration between two artists, another installation, potentially a collaboration between uh, an Emirati artist and uh, an international curator. So that's that's the idea. The artist has and must be uh, locally based. Uh, and the idea, we're again, we're building, uh, we're building a culture here. We're building. Uh, I would say most most of the artists can do that something by themselves. But we want at least in the next five years. And I want to just note. Uh, in, 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 in January, we had Dubai Light Festival with uh, Amna, Amna Bilhol here, the, uh, the creative director of Al Wasl Dome. And I, I remember when we started talking uh, Amna six, seven months ago, she said, we'll do that with the Emirati artists. Uh, and it's very like it's very hard to to not not Emirati artists have all the the, the knowledge they have the all the expertise. Sometimes when you talk to to others, like okay, why you don't make it international? So mashallah, she've done it, and and this is one one of the things when I went to Dubai Light Festival, this could be potentially taken and put as a public art after. So it's the inshallah the after effect would be a lot of stuff that happens would be potentially you know when when you commission a piece you would think about the longevity of it and how can that, that piece be one of the pieces that you know, makes the fabric of Dubai, the art uh, fabric of Dubai. Uh, why three years? With, uh, so when, when, when we uh, thought about it, and, and uh, I have a business development investment background, I don't think, I, I don't think even if you don't talk about the art, uh, the art sector, I, I think with the public, uh, with, sorry, with the private entities, we, in a way, and that's not a negative, but in a way, the government entities and the work we've done, trained, if I could say it, trained or made, uh, made it, uh, you know, a norm that government would do everything in, in this. Uh, and we, do, we, I don't think we can expect a government, you know, a private sector to come right away and say, you know what, I'll do this piece for. Uh, X million right away. We wanted to put, you know, the, the, you know. I was telling Sheikha this piece, uh, even Afra, this piece will make a big difference because now I could go to talk about to private entities. I could talk even to to the likes of uh, our colleagues in RT, Dubai municipality, and look what can be done by collaborating with the Marathi artists and locally based artists. I think that's the that's the idea. We need a little bit of momentum to start. Uh, three years again. We, we the budget will not be less in the next years. It's more we we hopefully would have more uh, business development mindset to get more budget uh, to 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 grow. That's uh, that's the idea behind it. 
So, uh, Benedetta, what, how do you think involving the private sector, what would that do to the Dubai Public Art Initiative and its mission? I think it's essential because, you know, as an ecosystem, I think we have been really good at that, at looking at ways to bridge public and private. And I think it would most likely, I mean, I'm sure of it, enrich the end result, right? Because of course the considerations that are being made by both parties are different and what each party can contribute is different, right? So if you have the kind of governance and the frameworking support of a government entity and then you have the practical considerations of the private sector, um, I think that sort of most likely strengthens the outcome. And I think the other thing is that it's advocacy, right? So we need people to understand across all ages and all sectors the importance and the power of art. So you need the kind of network of people coming together and the bigger the network, the better who are all advocating at different levels, right? So there's nothing better than if, of course, the government plays its role uh, in terms of putting in place the structure that enables, you know, the work to thrive. And at the same time, within the private sector, people understand why it is important to support culture and what are the benefits, the many, many benefits, tangible and intangible, of doing so. Um, so, yeah, I think it's absolutely essential. So I'd like to open the floor to one or two questions before we wrap up. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to ask our artists or, or yes? Hi, uh, thanks for this really interesting talk. I actually live right across from where the, um, the sculpture is and it looks really amazing. And like you guys were saying, it's a very important um, area in Dubai. And what I know from living there is it's very diverse. The type of people who live and work and uh, walk there are from all parts of Dubai. So I'm wondering for you artists, when you are creating the work and planning it, were you thinking a lot, given that it's public art, about the people who would be seeing this and how they would interact with the work? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we looked at uh, the location first, uh, what's it surrounding. I remember Khalid was very... Um, interested in also like uh, linking the the proximity to the port and uh, the neighborhoods uh, someone was I, I can't remember who but someone was also talking about uh, there was a previous neighborhood that was demolished and they're actually reconstructing something there now and uh, one of the things I remember discussing is that it's a park uh, it's just a lawn basically of grass and like who who uh, utilizes that, what kind of people go and uh, is it utilized? Do people go picnic or do they hang out in the uh, uh, park uh, area? And we really wanted to be conscious that whatever we create becomes uh, something that entertains also the viewers who engage with that space. So uh, instead of it just being plain, then let's bring art in the conversation. And I think that that also feeds into education. Maybe it makes people curious what it is and why is it there. Uh, we slowly become, uh, it becomes educational for the rest of the public as well and makes art more inclusive, I think. I mean, uh, before the talk, Tanya was talking about how even while the work was being installed, people were kind of like coming up and like taking selfies and, and, and involving themselves within the artwork. And I thought that was just a beautiful anecdote into how public art really affects our, our daily lives and, and, can be, and, and can be part of our personal histories, really. Um, any other questions? Um, hi. I was wondering if there's a specific meaning of the artwork, especially we see the scripture on it and... Uh, yeah, that's the question I wanted to know more about it. I was very intrigued when I saw it. Thank you. Um, these uh, mark makes, making on the sculptures, these are actually an, uh, Muhammad Ahmed Ibrahim paintings. So usually if you're looking at his paintings, you will see these uh, sketches or figures, I would call them, symbols uh, within the work that we wanted to wrap the work uh, as part of his work. Um, Maybe you'd like to add? That was actually 
Respond. Okay, that was actually in response to uh, what you were talking about said earlier, is uh, uh, thinking that uh, we were going to give Mohammed Ahmed the uh, prize and the opposite was happening, but we actually, we were talking about uh, the decision of deciding that one of the things we were talking about when we were planning the uh, work and uh, the idea of the work visually, we didn't really want it to be a Sheikha work or a Afra work or Asma work and so on, but we actually collectively decided, and I remember Mohammed wasn't part of this conversation, that we want to have um, Mohammed's uh, symbols on the work as a tribute to his generation and respect to his generation as well. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for this uh, for attending this illuminating and insightful talk. I realize in my excitement I forgot to introduce myself. Um, <laughs> So I'm Razmik Bedirian, I'm a culture reporter at The National, and thank you all for joining us. <laughs>